Are you a prepper or homesteader looking to connect with like-minded people in your area? Looking to start your own preparedness group? Already have a group? Well, look no further than PrepperNet. PrepperNet is dedicated to personal responsibility, individual freedoms, and being self-reliant. PrepperNet has monthly meetings in over 100 cities where you can meet and learn with like-minded people in your area. PrepperNet, where preppers unite. Find us online at PrepperNet.com. Napa know-how. A Napa guy knows more isn't always better, unless we're talking about full-size vans. These beasts do more than get you from A to B. They have so much space a man can live in it. With shag carpeting, water bed, and a sweet lava lamp, these mobile abodes have all the comforts of home. With quality parts and plenty of Napa know-how, you can keep the original tiny house running longer, stronger. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Hey, I'm Joe Alton, MD. I'm here to remind you that disasters can happen anytime, anywhere, and you need to know what to do in an emergency. The new 2016 third edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook is the essential guide for when medical help is not on the way. The Survival Medicine Handbook covers every issue you'll face in times of trouble, and it's all in plain English. Get the Survival Medicine Handbook at Amazon.com. I guarantee one day you'll be glad you did. You've just joined the Prepper Broadcasting Network, where we promote self-reliance and independence. The views and opinions expressed are strictly those of the host or their guests. Visit us in the interactive chat room at PrepperBroadcasting.com. said that many times. Hey, mm-hmm. welcome to the Prep and Academy. I am Forrest Garvin. We have Kyle sitting across the table from us. We are live Friday night, Eastern Standard Time. It's live. We are live right now. Uh, yeah, you're, you're definitely lively. 99% of the people will be listening to us record it, but we are live right now. That's fine. So if you're listening to this and it's recorded, just know that every Friday night, you can go to prepperbroadcasting.com. It's 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and listen to us live. We have an interactive chat room. We're going to be taking questions from the chat room later on this evening. Um, If you're over on Blog Talk Radio and you just tuned in and you're listening to this incredible show, um, you can switch over to Prepper Broadcasting um, and listen to us there, and you'll see the chat room and and all that. Um, Tonight we have a special guest. Um, Kyle actually has a friend, um, so we're gonna. He called his one friend. He's gonna be in tonight. But anyway, Kyle, how, how was your week? What's going on with you? Not a whole lot, man. Dude, it was it was it was you know I ended my career of one week for last week. Kyle started a new career, yeah. went to all this training, and then after one week, yeah, about that, he said, "Take this job and shove it." No, <laughs> you know, just, you you want to be with people who are, who are honest and. You know, I'm not under investigation or anything like that. There's know. nothing wrong with being under investigation. Oh, wait. No. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Never mind, yeah. So, um, did you, I mean, are you searching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I still have my other job, so I went back to that. And oh, yeah. Worked a little back bit there, so, I mean, that, that's all good, but still searching. We and I sent you the ad about the Chippendales are coming to town that, you know, I'm trying out for. Yeah, you just need to lose, what would you say, three, <laughs> three pounds? If I need to lose three pounds, all I need to, you know, drink a little yeah. bit more water. Yeah, something like that. Something how, about, like, how, about, how about your week? Pretty decent. My week was good. Um, we had we had lunch this week, right? So you obviously. Oh yeah, we went to a pizza place. Yeah. yeah. You, while you were in the office. Right? Yes, in the office. But you know, the pizza place was kind of interesting, um, because when I went, um, 
we went in, and they had no menus whatsoever. There was no menus on behind the board. There were no, they couldn't get. They, they were remodeling. I think yeah, they were yeah. just starting. But when you first start remodeling the model of place, you don't just take all your menus out and throw them away. And that's kind of what they did. So um, tonight, uh, well, look before we get into the show, though, we got to go through this thing that we do every week. Oh. Everyone looks forward to it, and I sit here and I make fun of Kyle. Kyle and Alex Jones are brothers. No, we're not brothers, hardly. <laughs> they are brothers. They listen to they. They're on the same drum beat. To uh, and today, so what we do every week, Kyle comes and he he expresses or shares with us a conspiracy theory that sometimes he believes. Sometimes, most of the time, he believes. Um, this pen has a camera in it, by the way. Um, uh-huh. And so what is Kyle's conspiracy theory this week? Well, you know, we've talked about conspiracy theories that have some traction. We've talked about ones that have absolutely no traction or are just total nonsense. What we haven't talked about is ones that have a lot of traction, but just at this point don't matter. So They all matter. No, no, no. There's ones that truly don't matter okay. anymore. That it's like, you know, you've heard the expression, quit beating the dead horse. Yeah, but, man. There's, there's one dead horse that has been beaten <laughs> For the past eight years, that's just probably time to just let it go and just acknowledge damage has been done. And that would be the the birther conspiracy theory, Obama's long form birth certificate. And I know it, it did get any media coverage. Well, some alternative media covered it, but uh, Sheriff Joe Arpaio, back in November, they had another press conference. Uh, Mike Zulu was on there. They talked about the long form, went over all the major points uh-huh. for you know where the X's were, how things were signed, under X-ray, had multiple layers, yada, yada, yada. He said definitively, it's a fake document. So the the birth certificate that Obama published or released, you're saying, was yeah. scientifically proven to be false. Yeah, 100%. And they even went back through testimonies, and the, the words were changed over periods of time where first it became, I saw his birth certificate, to, oh, I saw the record of a birth certificate. Hmm. So they they went back and they had to keep backtracking everything with it, but at this point, damage done. Just let it's it go. Already it's, destroyed it's, it's, America. Even if it goes before Congress, it's going to get dragged out for years and years and years. He'll be eighty, ninety years old. Probably we could waiting. still deport him. I, so I mean, there is some hope. Isn't he planning on going to Hawaii anyways? Uh, no, he's got a house. We can in just Washington. build. A, we can just build a wall, wall. around it. <laughs> That's you fine. Know, he moved Actually, in Washington. He was, he? The first thing he did it. was build a wall around yeah. his house. Yeah. 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 He's on the Trump train, baby. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> All that winning. All that. Man, yeah. I'm getting sick of winning. Man, I, I'm just, my, my, my stomach just hurts because I we're winning. Did you see the press conference yesterday? I did. That was, that was fun to watch. Oh, man. It was just like, okay, stop the winning. We got to stop this. Anyway. But, yes, yeah, so, um, so, you, so you don't make an you're not saying a judgment that it, that he was born in America or he wasn't. You're no, just making a judgment. At this point, it just it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Well, I, I don't even want to see it, it go. It does. Out. The principle of being the president. It does matter. If if it gets proven, hundred percent, and goes for Congress, and they say without a doubt, this firing is, squad. No, they're not oh. going to do anything like that. You know oh. what they're going to do? It's going to be an embarrassment. Oh. In front of the entire world that we allowed someone basically to. Calm their way into the presidency of the yeah. United States. Hmm. But that's enough about that. So we actually have, I think Chad's already ready and in there. So, so we've got a special guest tonight. And, you know, this is the first guest that um, I bring on all these big main guests. That sometimes don't show. One one guy <laughs> didn't show. And we're working through, we've already worked today. He's called, that was, um, the most famous writer in our genre, I guess. But um, um, but you you have one friend, you know one person he calls in, mm-hmm. and you got him to call in tonight. So tell us about who's calling in tonight. So we're going to be having Chad from Infinite Body Armor. He's going to be joining us. He is the uh, CEO, founder, um, terrific guy. I've talked to him a little bit over the past. I actually own some of the products from Infinite Body Armor. Um, is Chad there? Yep, I'm here. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, perfect. Man. Yes. How are you doing tonight? Hey, Chad. Yeah, Welcome to the show. I appreciate it, Forrest. So, Chad, 
one of the reasons we got you on here tonight is obviously if we're going to be talking body armor and any sort of field of prepping, first thing that comes to my mind is infidel body armor. Um, it's something I personally own. I've used. I've never been shot. So I use pictures of yeah, it. Yeah, well, I've never had to test it by being shot, but obviously yeah, I've mm-hmm. tested it wearing it, doing drills, and stuff like that. What what got you into body armor? I know you're a veteran, but what specifically kind of called to you there? Hey, let's take a quick break. Are you a prepper or homesteader looking to connect with like-minded people in your area? Looking to start your own preparedness group? Already have a group? Well, look no further than PrepperNet. PrepperNet is dedicated to personal responsibility, individual freedoms, and being self-reliant. PrepperNet has monthly meetings in over 100 cities where you can meet and learn with like-minded people in your area. PrepperNet, where preppers unite. Find us online at PrepperNet.com. Well, that just kind of started the whole thing. Um, before I was in the Air Force, I was also a police officer. So I had some experience wearing body armor. And then military, I, I, I did and the job that I was in. I did not wear body armor. But then afterwards, as soon as I got out, this was in 2009, Obama had just gotten elected. You guys were just talking about him. But uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> he had just gotten elected. And if you can... If you can turn the time back and, and kind of hit rewind and remember the hysteria and um, for, amongst conservatives about his election and all the stuff that was going around it, I had just gotten out of the military and I realized I was caught flat-footed. I had no preparations. I didn't even own a firearm at that time when I got out. And so it was like a huge scramble for me to try to get food for my family and how to garden and buy guns and get water, you know, and and all the different things. And it was really, really overwhelming. But uh, one of the things that I did is I started making a list. And somewhere along those, you know, somewhere along the first year or so after me getting out of the military, I decided since I was buying so much, it was more sense for me to become a uh, business. So I started this website and uh, it was still around it's called internet prep really launched me and um so i was able to buy bulk food and water filters and things like that and um which was great and then i got to the point after a couple years doing this, i got to the point where i was like all right i need two things left on my list i need gas mask and i need body armor and so the gas mask that was an easy box to check <laughs> the body right. armor took a little bit more research because you know, most of the body armor out there, most of it is designed for military and it's designed to be replaced. If you get hit, it's designed to be replaced. And as as we know, right. being a prepper, that doesn't work. You know, you've no, got what you've definitely. got and it's got to last you forever. So um, knowing what I knew and, and uh, so I, I was trying to figure out the solution. And at the time, but AR-500 plates, steel plates. And I'm like, okay, well, that will work because, you know, that's like a you know, 100, you know, 200 times and it will work. But then I, I saw a slow motion video of a bullet striking that steel plate and a bullet shattered and there was shrapnel everywhere. And I was like, I don't want to be close to that thing. And uh, yeah. you know, forget, forget the whole idea of buying body armor or maybe just buying some ceramic plates or something like that. But, um, then I got the idea. I was like, how about we put a covering on it, put some kind of coating to absorb that shrapnel. And, you know, the idea was born. I can't say I, I can say I was one of the very, very first. And I've talked to my competitors and we all came up with the idea within a couple of months of each other. It's really amazing um, that everybody had this. Well, three of us had the idea at the same time, but um, we put the coating on the plate and lo and behold, it absorbed the shrapnel perfectly and it works fantastically. So, You've got this perfect prepper plate. It's, it's economical. It does the job. It, it can stop hundreds, literally hundreds. We've, we shot it 100 times with an AK and then another 100 times with an AR-15, and it stopped all those rounds. So it's, it's like Dang. really the ultimate prepper's plate. But, yeah, that, so that's kind of the story of how it grew and, or how it got started. And, and now um, we've been around here. We've got a little experience. We've learned. We've 
improved the plate, made it a little bit stronger. We've added new types of plates so that are lighter weight. You know, so we're able to appeal to a larger demographic. But preppers are what got us started, and, and prepper is where, where our heart is. That's where my heart is. And Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, that's how it, how it got going. So That's really cool. It sounds a lot like kind of what I was looking at whenever I first started prepping. I got so far into it, and then I said, shoot. I need body armor. And I think the first thing I bought was for, from another competitor. And I, I bought some level 3A stuff. And then I did more and more research. And I'm like, you know what? This stuff's too bulky. It's hot. It's uncomfortable. It breaks down over five years. It's not long-term what I'm going to need. Maybe if it was something, you know, I just kept in my gun safe or something like that for, like, my wife or my kid and you know, protect them. But then, you know, I, I remember watching similar videos. And you would see whenever a bullet would shatter against a plate. And the spalling that would occur, and and I mean, this might sound really awful. People are going to laugh, but the first thing I thought about was, I do not want to get caught below the belt with metal flying off. It might save me, but if I if I get that, it hits you know your femoral artery or something like that, you're still done. So that's one of the oh, things. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, I see infidel body because, armor. Yeah, anywhere you think you're going to be holding your rifle out or your pistol, it could hit your your um, brachial artery on your, either of your arms. It can hit your neck. Mm-hmm. It could hit your groin. Yeah, it's you don't want to be anywhere near armor, steel armor that doesn't have coating on it. And so, yeah, absolutely, man. That's the that's the, as soon as I saw that slow motion video, that's the same thing that went through my head. I was like, I don't want to be anywhere <laughs> near this. I don't want to be standing next to somebody that's got this on. But, uh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. But so, uh, yeah. That being said, I mean, obviously, there's there's a lot of us who have done our research and we look at things and just hands down. I mean, we, we've gone over kind of the, the anti spalling material on there. You know, a lot of people have concerns over, you know, steel plates versus ceramics, happy plates. Um, what's the other one? Start with a D. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, it's like so dynamometer. Poly. Well, Dyneema. Yeah. That's, that's a yeah. type of, uh, a type of aramid product. And there's a lot of products out there. Um, I can go over them real briefly just to discuss the pros and cons of each. And I sell almost all of them, so I'm not trying to rag on any particular one. But, yeah. but here's, here's the thing. Okay, so there's steel. That's the most economical. Uh, steel is always going to be steel. Unless it, like, corrodes and rusts, you know, it's, it's always going to maintain its integrity. You can drop it off of a 10-story building. It's still going to be steel. It'll still stop below. Um, downsides, it's heavier than some of the other materials. Uh, not that mm-hmm. much heavier, maybe a pound heavier. So it's not like it's a, oh, I got the heaviest plate. It's, it's maybe a pound heavier than average. Um, yes. So it's, that's what steel has going for it. AR, and, and typically you look at steel, there's AR500, which was what we started with. And AR stands for abrasion resistant. And then 500 is the hardness level. It's measured mm-hmm. on the Brunel scale of hardness. So we've actually increased ours now uh, to AR550, uh, okay. 10% harder than the AR500. The problem that you, if you – why didn't we go to AR600? Well, the harder steel you get, the less malleable it is. And so if you try to bend it and put that curve into it around your chest, it gets brittle and it can break. So, Precisely. Yep. So the next one is uh, – talk about ceramic. At first, I was totally against ceramic for, for well, for two reasons. One, because um, you're supposed to replace it every five years or so. Um, and then, so that's not good for preppers. And then the second is that it doesn't take multiple hits, which also isn't good. Uh, there's no way to replace it. <laughs> right, so, yeah. um, so I was against, I was against ceramics for the longest time until I stumbled upon a a manufacturer that swore to me that his was multi-hit and I was like yeah yeah I've seen the the uh the claims before and he's like nope it it really is so we went out and and tested his materials and we were able to shoot it I think this the first test we did we were able to shoot it uh 17 times with a 308 and it stopped every single round so to me, that was like, oh wow, we're we're got a whole new ball game. So, yeah, there's a there's a to me that kind of that that shattered my paradigm of of what was acceptable in the ceramic world. So, I was like, all right, this is something that I can work with, and I think there's value. So, ceramic is a little bit lighter than steel usually. Uh, it's thicker, 
so it has a higher profile. Um, the lifespan, you can expect it to last between five and 10 years. Now that's manufacturers mm-hmm. claim, you know, and I think they do this and we do this. I am, I'm, I also do this. And I think it's more of a CYA because I've got some anecdotal information because when I was a police officer, we pulled out an old piece of Kevlar from like the 1980s, I think. So this had to have been 20 years old. Um, we pulled it out of the locker that had been sitting in this locker in Arizona. So, you know, temperatures are 120 oh, degrees yeah. in this locker. We pulled it out and we shot it and it stopped the bullets. So it did what it was supposed to do, even in the worst conditions, uh, being yeah. super old and being subject to heat. So I, I think as long as the you're being reasonably careful with the material, with the ceramic, I don't think you really have anything to worry about. Additionally, NIJ came out with, that's the National Institute of Justice. They're the, the governing body over the levels of body armor in the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, they came up with a new uh, requirement, which is very, very tough. And, and what they do actually is you have to drop the armor onto a cement floor with a 10 pound backer on it and it has to survive. <laughs> oh, nice. so, so ceramics now are very durable. They're not like they were back in the eighties and nineties where they say, do not drop handle with care, fragile, fragile, fragile. Now I, I load mine up. I throw them in the back of my pickup truck. I don't worry about them breaking because I know they're, they're strong enough now. So ceramics have come a long ways. Yeah. So that, that's, that's- that's a lot more than yeah, I remember. Right. So I, I remember years ago, whenever I first started researching, it was like, you know, if you drop it, you need to have it x-rayed, make sure there's no, you know, fissures in it. It's three, four hit capable and that's it. And I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Exactly. And not all ceramics can do what, what I'm telling you ours can. And I'm not trying to bag mm-hmm. on anybody's, but I'm just, not all ceramics are created equal, just like not all steels created. equal. Absolutely. But um, let's see. Um, yeah. But in the military, um, with the, after every deployment, they would x-ray the plates to make sure there weren't any cracks in them. And as long as they didn't have cracks, they'd put them back in circulation. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, so that's where the x-ray idea came from. But, man, really plates are, are, are much, much dur- more durable than they used to be. So I don't have really any concerns about durability of, of ceramic plates. They still have – I mean, they're multi-hit. Um, yeah. But compared to a steel plate that can stop hundreds of rounds versus a – ceramic plate that can stop you know tens of rounds or 10 rounds um there's a difference but really how many times you're going to get shot in the chest or back and survive uh, precisely reasonably yeah so then the next category would be uh ultra high density polyethylene and sometimes people call that pure poly or a poly plate they're the ones that you see floating in the water they're ultra lightweight they weigh like a pound or two pounds and um, they are – there. most of those are rated level three, and I'll talk about the ratings later, But which means that it can stop a 308, which is great. Okay. That's what NIJ tests for, 308. But it won't stop – it won't stop a 556, the, the uh, M855s, or the 193s. So if you think about a, um, a 308 round, it's a slow-moving – big round it's easy to stop yeah but you you get a 556 that's really small and a lot faster moving you know 3,000 feet per second fast is it's moving about 400 feet per second faster than a 308 it's a lot smaller diameter so those actually zip right through those pure polys i tell people don't wear them they're Mm -hmm. they're not good for anything because the most popular rounds out there (laughs) from our military from civilians from drug runners from almost anybody if you're going to get shot with a rifle chances are it's going to be a 556 and what good is wearing that plate going to do you if it's not going to stop that particular round so yeah um that's my, that's my advice there's a lot of different manufacturers out there um and uh, the right in the, in the levels that i just talked about the plates i just talked about those are rated for rifle um you mentioned that you had a 3a and and that's for pistol which we also saw because yeah. there's a time and a place for everything but yeah, so that's that's kind of just the, the the construct of the different types of plates that are there. Um, I don't want to talk you guys' ear off. If you got a question, <laughs> throw it out at me. <laughs> well, I was going to say, you know, one of the things we were talking about just before we even came on here is, uh, hey, do, do you ever watch uh, or pay attention to SHTF plan? 
Dot com. Yes. Yes. I just I just seen a video on there last night where uh, you know a guy was just getting gas at a station, pulled up. Someone noticed the Trump sticker on his truck and said, "Hey, you need to take that off." He said, "Heck no, I'm not taking it off." And the guy pulled out an AR-15 and started waving it around. And you know the sad reality of it is, is it's one of those things that's already on my mind. Is you know I have my regular plate carrier with my level three plates at home, and I'm sitting here thinking. You know, maybe I should even just keep one in my truck because you never know whenever you might end up. Do you have a Trump sticker on your truck? No, I don't have a Trump sticker on my truck. You well, know then you guys don't have to worry about. Yeah, yeah. there should be no problem then. I mean, there might be. There's there are some offensive bumper <laughs> stickers on there. Some... Just slightly offensive, but you know, and my beard's very <laughs> offensive to some people. You know, but you know, it's one of those things that it, the the day that we're living in, I can remember back in 2006. My mind being, you know, totally oblivious to most things. I mean, I, I knew what was going on somewhat, but thinking, I don't need body armor. I don't even need a gun. Everything will be fine. And now here we are in 2017, and I'm thinking, well, I need my body armor at home. I probably need some body armor in my truck. And, you know, I need this gun and that gun and all sorts of different scenarios. So things have definitely escalated. But, Chad, I know that from the time that I looked at Infidel body armor, that you guys were strictly body armor. And now you guys have kind of evolved – and I got an email from you today, and you guys are doing a lot more as far as training. And then I also know you have a DVD series. Could you tell me a little bit about kind of what, what's next? Because it looks like you guys are doing quite a bit. Yeah, we have. Uh, so two years ago, um, we started. I started a venture. I decided I want. And um, when I was in the military, that's. That's one of the things that I, I did a lot was training. And after I got out, I did four more years of training as a defense contractor. So it was kind of in my blood. And one of the things I hated about training in the military was death by PowerPoint. Uh, and anybody, who, anybody who's been there knows what I'm talking about. And you sit through, you know, 10 hours a month of mandatory training in a death by PowerPoint. It sucks. And I didn't want to replicate that. I wanted to fix what was broken and actually mm-hmm. make training in a way that people wanted to watch it and, and actually learn from it. So, man, I was really fortunate. Here's the story. I was uh, sitting at the DMV. I had this idea that I wanted to do training, but I was sitting at the DMV. And um, I look over, and this guy's got shorts on, and he's got a Ranger, Army Ranger tattoo on his leg. So I struck up a conversation and we met for lunch the next day and um, we decided that we had what we needed to make a movie. And so that's what we did. We, we started it with a prepper family that um, had made plans and then all of a sudden, you know, it hit the fan and they needed to bug out. And so um, it, it actually follows the plot of a family that, that does bug out and along the way they're, they're shot at, they have to do recon over hills. You know, to get there safely, they're in a convoy. So we talk about convoy driving, and um, they run out of gas, and all kinds of different stuff happens to them along the way. And every scene that we have is set up to, and designed to teach. It's not just, oh, well, let's, you know, have this fun scene. This will be fun. No, yeah. we had everything planned out. It's like, okay, this is a teaching moment. And the way we did it was, was pretty unique. So imagine this, um, the Army Ranger guy, he's – he is, and he's a character in the movie, and he's shooting over the hood of his car that has been disabled, uh, returning fire to uh, to this family or to this, you know, the ambushers. And he takes a knee and hides behind the wheel, and he turns right to the camera and he talks to the camera. He's like, "Now what I'm doing is I'm laying down to press a fire so that the rest of the guys can get out of the truck and to the other vehicle. And then once they're fully loaded up, then I'm going to get back in." Well, I got to get back in the fight, and then he gets back up and keeps fighting, and it, it's really interactive and kind of fun. Gotcha. So, so what's more, and I really like this, and um, is that I have a book that goes with it, and so every chapter in the movie, like it is a DVD, every mm-hmm. chapter has a corresponding chapter in the book, hmm. which okay. explains exactly what we did and why we did it, the rationale behind it, checklist, uh, what was in our car. Because we just show it real quickly, like, here's we're, we're packed up, we're ready to go. Make sure you have these three things that you might not have thought of. But what's the rest of this stuff? Because you can see there's a pile of stuff in the back of our car. If you're going to bug out, you know, we have a list of all the different things. And anyhow, um, it was really successful. We, that came out in uh, 2015. Super successful. We sold a, a bunch of them. 
we decided to make a sequel. So we have another DVD that we released last fall, and um, <clears throat> it's been also really fantastic. We've got uh, escape and evasion. We've got tracking, counter tracking, um, interrogation, counter interrogation, um, patrolling, uh, teamwork, uh, first aid. There's a whole bunch that's in there, and it's really in a fun way to watch it. And what my dad did, and he uses this DVD. I think he's probably watched it a dozen times. He brings his he brings his neighbors and friends over so that they'll watch it and kind of start thinking about prepping and start. I think it's a great oh, way to cool. introduce, yeah, yeah you know. introduce your friends and family and start, get them to start thinking about it. Like, hey, what if this happened to us? What would we do? You know, and it starts that conversation. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm yeah. not worried about my neighbors anymore to this point. <laughs> yeah, you you effectively scared all your neighbors. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, I just have to get out of the neighborhood and I'll be safe. <laughs> yeah, come right, over to my neighborhood. Hey, Chad, one thing I have in front of me right now is a uh, one of the uh, a person I forgot the name of the company. They sent me a clipboard that is actually level three A. Three A. That is um, it's Kevlar pressed together. And a lot of they said a lot of police officers use it. Do you have do you um, manufacturing? I've seen it and I've, no, I don't manufacture for for that, and uh, I don't think there's anything really wrong with it. But um, it, I figure would, if they shoot, I, would, I could just take the clipboard up and deflect the the bullets as they're coming at me. <laughs> Good luck yeah. with that. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he's he's watched too many Chinese uh, ninja movies. Wonder Woman did it. Yeah, Wonder Woman. That great. You're now compare yeah, right. yourself to Wonder with the Woman. bracelets. Wait, I, this is bigger <laughs> than what she had. Come on. So we can get you a broad press three A Kevlar, and you'll be good. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. You, you know, you know, there there's there might be some thought or some value to this. If a police officer is using this up at the car to like write somebody a ticket. And they yeah. pull out a gun, and and it, and it just happens to deflect. But that police officer is wearing body armor, anyways. Right. Yep. So yeah. So I really don't. I don't really understand what the the idea here is. And the officer really. I've been through a lot of tactics. He shouldn't be holding anything in his hands while he's up there, other than the person's driver's license and insurance. He should have his one hand free so he can draw his weapon and do. You well, know, he's got a donut in one hand. hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 not so much. You should okay. Eye contact. Right? Okay. But I think it's pretty safe to say. I mean, one of, the, one of the things that a lot of people get into is, you know, if you're if you're going to be a prepper, and obviously, you know, you and I, we both have that, that in common. We have a passion for preparedness in, in this community. Because there's a lot of people who they go out there, they spend two, three grand on their, you know, their main battle rifle, their AR-15, their AK, their AR-10, which, whichever, you know, their preference is. And then they, they totally neglect the body armor. And I've seen a lot of these guys. I mean, I've, I've been in the prepping community for over the past decade. And I've seen a lot of these guys talk about this high speed, low drag. They're just going to run out there with guns a-blazing. And they're, they're wearing just a simple chest rig and just their mags. And they, they just think there's this. Okay. Stop right there. Uh, go, go for it. Are, are you pointing the finger at me? No, I'm not pointing the finger at you. But, I mean, because I'm sure I have the battle rifle. I have every – you described me. Rifle. No. The 22. <laughs> I have the Daniel Defense. I mean, but I don't have any body armor at all. Well, so, um, so I have a clipboard. Thing, you, <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing: if you have a gun, do you somewhere in your prepper, or you have this gun because somewhere in your mind you think that you might be in a gunfight at some point? Like that's why you bought the gun. You bought the yes. gun because you're like, I need to defend my family. I because I might be in a gunfight because. Someone might attack me, and I'm going to have to use this gun to defend my family. So you've already crossed that threshold in your mind that you're going to be in a gunfight. It's not if it happens, it's when. And when it happens, you want to have body armor as something in your arsenal to go to. So there's something called MET-TC. And and what that means in in a nutshell is that everything is mission-dependent. This is something that we learned in the military was that just because you have something doesn't mean you're going to use it. It's a tool in the toolbox. So – let me give you an example. If I had to do like some like long recon mission, like I heard, let's just say there's an EMP, I've lost communication, but I see smoke like coming from like five miles away. I have no idea if there's any threats, real threats out there, but I'm going to go investigate. I might not bring my body armor because I'm planning to be like super sneaky and I want to be able to move fast and light and I'm not going to bring it. 
Um, but on the other hand, if I have intel or I know that there's a, a, a potential for combat, for, for a firefight, then I'm going to wear everything that I've got. So it's about if you've got the tool, you can use it. But if you don't have the tool in your toolbox, you can't go to it. You, you can't use it. That's my thoughts on, on Precisely. whether you should own it or not. It's, something, it's a tool to have. If, you've, if, you've, if you have it, you can use it. Definitely. But, um, you, you, you asked me about something else, or you, you kind of alluded to it in your last little thing, was um, about these guys that <clears throat> buy the guns, and they, they've read a couple books. They, maybe they've watched Sniper one too many times, but they think that they can do it, and they think that they can go out and just be a badass. Um, yeah, thank you. But you've got to get the training. You really have to get oh. the training because until you've been through it, you don't know how you're going to react. And so that's what training is. And I'm not talking about going down to the range, setting up on a bench with your bag and plinking and putting nice little holes in paper. That's not training. That's sighting in your weapon. And as soon as that's done, you got to get off. You got to get off of that square range, and you got to start combat training. And that's hard to do if you haven't been through it. You don't know how to train yourself. Um, you've got to find a qualified instructor. And, and really, there's only a couple, in my mind, and at least in my opinion, there's, there's only a, a handful of people who are really qualified to teach combat rifle, combat pistol. And, you know, it might be your infantry person. They, they're going to have a level of skill. But if you're going to learn from somebody, um, I say learn from the best, you know, learn from somebody who was a special operator, who, who was in the spec op community, like a, an army ranger or a Navy SEAL or somebody who, you know, really was there and did it. And they can tell you what worked and what didn't. That's my, nice. that's, that's where I went when I did this movie thing. I didn't want just like a, nothing against just a standard infantry person, but it's like, Hey, I want to get the best that I can. And, that, that way, I have no doubt that in my mind whatsoever that this person with it, whatever they're telling me, is legit and, right. and is for real. Yep. Yeah, so absolutely. That, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a quick, quick break. Chad, do you mind staying with us for just a few minutes? There's a couple questions for you, and we'll be right back. Okay, no problem. Cool. Hi, this awesome. is Ron Paul. I am a former congressman, physician, and presidential candidate. The world is in turmoil. Things like Ebola. Earthquakes, wars, and famines are commonplace. As Americans, we are largely sheltered from these events. However, in parts of the world, just having enough food is a huge problem. For some of us, there is the nagging thought that we may not always have it so good. So we keep some food on hand just in case. My family and I have found a product that helps us do this better. It's a home freeze dryer from Harvest Right. With it, we eat healthier and store a little more food. We freeze dry everything we love to eat, and it lasts up to 25 years. Who knows what the future will bring? One thing's certain, my family and I will always have food on the table. To learn more, go to HarvestRight.com or call 800-923-9591. That's HarvestRight.com or 800-923-9591. There's nothing better than a good book if you know where to find one. Visit the bookstore at PrepperBroadcasting.com and see the most popular authors. How-to books from canning food to tanning hides, herbal remedies to survival medicine. Want fiction? It's there. Find yourself surviving a global disaster or a horde of zombies. Nonfiction? It's also there. We have the books that will have you cheering for the hero or crying for the lost heart. Visit the bookstore at PrepperBroadcasting.com and see what you've been missing. Find peace of mind for your family at Forge Survival Supply. Founded by United States Marine Corps veterans, Forge is the premier destination for quality American-made survival and emergency preparedness products. Freeze-dried foods, water filtration, fire starters, fully equipped bug-out bags. Find everything your family needs to stay safe, protected, and nourished during times of uncertainty at ForgeSurvivalSupply.com. Delivery is fast, and it's free on all orders. Need help? Call our 24-7 support team. As a listener of this program, Forge Survival Supply would like to give you an additional 10% savings. That's right, an additional 10% off your entire order, plus free shipping by entering discount code SURVIVOR at checkout. That's ForgeSurvivalSupply.com, and use discount code SURVIVOR. All right. Hey, guys, thank you for joining this evening. 
This is the Prepper Academy. We are live every Friday night on PrepperBroadcasting.com. And if you're listening to us on a podcast, make sure you go to PreppingAcademy.com. Um, send us a message. Sign up for our um, email list, which still today we have an email list on Prepper, uh, Prepper Academy. To call. Mm-hmm. I've yet to send an email out this year. That's how good we are. Yeah, I don't know if that's. I don't know if you would quite call that good. Oh, oh, well, I just don't want to spam mean, people. Hey, yeah, I don't want to spam I people. Mean, so we're anti-spam, like but we haven't sent one out today. But go over to preppingacademy.com, sign up for a mailing list. Also, join us on Facebook um, as well. Uh, matter of fact, soon we're going to be streaming live video mm-hmm. on our Prepping Academy on um, um, soon um, on Prepping Academy Facebook page. We're going to be. Sh- Streaming live video. Sorry, folks. He had a small stroke here. I did. I, I was trying to do three different things at once. Um, Chad, I don't know if I, I mentioned, but um, <laughs> I don't have body armor. Um, I don't know if I mentioned that or not. I just want to make sure everyone here knows that. Just in case anything happens, in case, like, I do. <laughs> just, just want to make sure. Um, um, did so, I? Did you don't? Know, I'll go ahead. Yeah. So where no, we well, are? Well, well, here's the thing: is that there's there, <laughs> there's a spectrum of people out there, and there's the spectrum of people that I say they're they're the they're preppers, but they're Glenn Beck preppers, and they're on the mm-hmm. far left end of the spectrum, and then on the far far right, there's uh, I think they're my Alex Jones preppers. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Be, so, be those are the, that's Cal. They're brothers, the by people, the way. <laughs> they're brothers. I heard. Uh, yeah. Those are the people that buy body armor. So you might be further to the left than you think. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I need some body armor. Yeah, he, uh, he, he so if you know of any places um, that has good body armor, yeah, yeah, for, uh, yeah. Okay. Right. So plug plug my company. Yeah, it's InfidelBodyArmor.com. dot com. That's where Infidel you can Body find Armor. It. Yeah, Infidel. It's it's a hard name to forget because we're all infidels, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mm-hmm. had bacon for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and dessert. So um, one of the questions um, from our, if you don't mind, do you have another question, Kyle? I'll go to um, Are your DVDs available on your Infidel website? Yes, of course. So you can buy them. They're actually on sale right now. If you go to the InfidelBodyArmor.com website, um, one of the menu items will have it. And it's marked down. Actually, I think if you click on specials, because that will show okay. up on sale right now. So if they click on specials, um, it's marked down it's half off you now. And uh, yeah, so that's available. And then um, you guys asked me about training and, and you said, yeah, that is that is part of the next evolution and the DVD is part of it. But mm-hmm. that's just the tip of the iceberg because what we're working on right now is creating a network of those special operator trainers that I was just mentioning, these guys who are special forces rangers uh um maybe seal uh, marine force recon guys that are trainers right now and they travel all over the united states some of them stay in one place but most of them like to travel and we're setting up training everywhere so you can actually get no kidding training that's the next that's the next evolution for infidel that's what i'm talking about infidel yeah and uh that's that's what's really exciting me i i mean I can remember, we, we've talked about this before, where, it, you know, Forrest and I sitting across from the table, I, I used to play baseball for years, and I can remember going to White Sox and Cubs training camps and stuff like that, and this is one of those things where training is is priceless. The sweat equity you put into stuff like this is going to pay off, and hopefully it's just sweat and it's not blood later on down the line. But with stuff like this, you actually got to get out there, use your equipment, have your body armor on, train with it. Like, it, he gives me crap all the time because my bug out bag weighs like 60 pounds. But I rucksack on, on a regular basis, so I actually stay in shape for it. Your book out bag is like twice the size of you. <laughs> well, well, I would. You, yeah, but if you carry it and you know how heavy it is and you know what your capability is, it's those people that cram a bag full and have never put it on other than to carry it to their garage and leave it there. I've got, I got three, work, three weeks' worth of Pop-Tarts in my bug out bag. Yeah, I would believe that. Hey, only the essentials. Right. Yes, yes. But, you know, that, that's what I love because I, I seen earlier, and I, I know I got an email from you not too long ago about a, uh, a former Navy SEAL that was a, a BUDS instructor. I think he was SEAL Team 3, SEAL Team 5 doing trainings. Um, I see you yep. have the, the training ally group. You guys are trying to get started off. 
So I, I, I would just implore people, there's not a lot of companies that are out there doing that, but if you can put the money into it, this is probably one of the best investments you can make is to get out there and get the training. Well, training I is attended- absolutely essential. A lot of people, a lot of these preppers, they have guns and they go to these firing ranges that, you know, is a 10 foot wide lane. That is not, that's zero training. Well, that's where I like to shoot my 50. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Feet. But, um, and, and that's something that I want you to know, and, we, you know, we run the Carolina Preppers Network here in the Carolinas. We've got almost 4,000 members now. And one of the things I tell them, you've got to get out of the, the, the range. You've got to get off the range. You can't. There's very few ranges in this area you can do real training because it's so structured. You got your 10 by 10 lane. Everyone, you know, cease fire and they don't really have good training. So um, do you think, I mean, any of your guys in the Carolinas um, area that will be bringing that training local to us? Yes, absolutely. So um, the Navy SEAL that you guys were referring to, his name's Garrick, his his, uh call sign is Fern and um, Garrick is he is awesome he's an incredible instructor and very very serious about training so I know that he's putting together his uh, calendar right now and I believe that we have one if not two uh, training facilities that have agreed to host him in South Carolina there's another one I think in North Georgia so that might be close enough for you but um, yes so, I mean, we're still in the very, very early stages. The website isn't even finished yet. I just got an under construction type website that's, that's taking that place right now, but it should be launching in just a couple of weeks. And we are intent on taking this, you know, the full, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to hit a home run with this. And like you said, not very many people are, are doing this. And my, the first time I attended a, a, a training class like this, um, it was a three day class. And it was an overnight, and um, we did we did night vision training. So we it was incredible, and it was expensive. I I with my ammo and everything, I think it was about a thousand dollars for the three days. But it wow. was so worth it. Like it was so worth it. I would have paid probably twice, maybe three times that amount to get that type of experience. Just phenomenal. So you know, it's one of the, it might be one of those once in a lifetime things or you go and you get the training and you bring it back to your family and teach them, or you bring it back to your group and you teach your group how to do it. And you're going to be taught so well that you're going to be able to be an instructor on it. Um, Precisely. And it, yeah. It's, it, it really is worth it. Yeah. That's, that's, that's kind of my whole mindset right there. Just being able to get out there, do that, and then take it to a group and kind of just disseminate the information from there. So you always have your, your point guy and, that's your responsibility. You have other people who want to do gardening and stuff like that. There needs to be a, a point guy who gets all that training under his belt so he can show everyone else. Yep. Hey, okay, I've seen these commercials where these guys that make this bulletproof glass for, like, vehicles, they'll get in the car, and they'll have one of their employees shoot the window, like, six or seven times with them behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Have you done I've that video that yet? <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> so, so actually, no, I haven't, but I, I, I know the guy that sells the glass and, um, <laughs> if you're willing, I think he's looking for another person to get behind it. If you're willing. No, I'm not going to do it. No, I, I mean, you not. know what, if it, if it pays right, I might be, I'm, I'm kind of in a career transition. <laughs> so, I mean, I might, I might be willing to do that. I got a quick question yeah, about the, about the new ceramic that you were talking about. Um, are they still? I know the old ceramic. If you drop them, or, or if they got hit before, and you say the new ceramic, it, you you shot it. You said eighteen times or so. I mean, so is uh, it du- seventeen times of the three hundred eight? Yeah. Is it durable enough to wear the next week again? I mean, to so keep you using always it? want to wear the. So here's what you here's the scenario. The crap has hit the oscillator. The fecal matter has hit the oscillator, right? That's what we say, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, stores aren't open anymore. There's no more internet. You're not going to be able to get a resupply. Let's say you're wearing your ceramic body armor and you take a single shot to the chest. You survive, you get up, and you kill that bad guy. You eliminate the threat. What else are you going to wear? Are you going to throw that plate away? Or are you going to keep wearing it? You're going to keep wearing it because that's the best you have. Unless you have another one back at camp 
that no one's using because it's your backup, then you can put in a, your, your new one. You're always going to use the best that you have. So if that's the best you have and it's been shot once, I would wear it. If that's all I had, I'd wear it. But if I had a brand new one sitting back, I'd, I'd wear, the, I'd wear right. the, the best one that I had. So I think with you know the ceramic, if, if Forrest gets desperate enough, he'll, he'll probably go ahead and tape some dinner plates together, <laughs> with some Gorilla tape, and <laughs> strap that to plates. his chest. What, what was that guy? He made his own in um, Doomsday Preppers. He made his own <laughs> I, I, armor. Dude, I, that, 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 showed, that was that the craziest me. guy. That was the guy that was like 300 pounds, and he said he was going to break into – our house and take our food and because he didn't need to prep because he was going to come and take ours. I think it was the same guy. Yeah. When he had fell into and he got in trouble. Was, or was, was that he, a the, different was he guy? the one that was going like, to give his wife a C-section too or something? Yes. He was going to yeah. give a C-section to his wife. I still remember this one. It was insane. Yes. The guy's yeah. absolutely nuts. You know, the sad yeah. thing is, is the, the website that I used to be on, they actually, I, I can specifically remember Southern Prepper one coming on there and asking if anyone was interested. And I can remember some of the people and they actually ended up being on the show, and I just remember her saying, God, no, please, no. Please do not do this to our community because they were the most eccentric, crazy people. But, mm. you know, mm. is what it is. But, you know, what, Chad, th- thank you so much for tonight. I know whenever we talked earlier, I said probably be like, you know, 15, 20 minutes here. It's, it's going on probably about like 40 minutes, but we've got a lot of great information in there. Uh, talk about your training videos, everything like that. So I hope people that are listening, you know, tonight live, coming up on the you know, the podcast and that people were encouraged to definitely seek that out, you know, look on Infidel Body Armor with the products on Yeah, there. give us all your contact information, websites, and, and Sure, yeah, so and everything. it's, it's in, infidelbodyarmor.com, and the name of the, the DVD is called Driven. There's Driven 1 and there's Driven 2. You could also go to drivendvd.com to specifically buy that, but um, – InfidelBodyArmor.com has all of the stuff that you will need as far as, like, body armor and then the DVD. We also sell other stuff, too, like triggers. We sell helmets. We sell um, uh, sling, Yeah, I was looking at your sling. helmets, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's quite a bit out there. And, you know, we don't want to be the uh, – we don't want to be Cabela's and we don't want to be cheaper than dirt. Um, you know, there's those mm-hmm. guys already do that stuff. But I think what sets me apart is I actually test – and use every bit of equipment that we sell online. So it comes with my endorsement. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm just not selling because, like, hey, maybe I can make a buck on this. I sell it because I, I actually believe in it, and I think well, that it will be useful to other people. I'll tell you, that's one of the things that attracts me most to your company is I know whenever I bought my plates, I know there was something that came out with uh, privacy concerns, Um but basically, you know, if someone bought body armor, it being reported to the government and, you know, being put on a list, et cetera, et cetera. And I can remember, you know, whenever that happened, sending an email out to you guys and you actually personally responded to me. Uh, I can call the company. I can actually get a hold of you. Most of these companies that are out there that are catering to, catering to preppers. You, you're going to get a hold of some customer service agent. You're going to wait for 10, 15 minutes to get online with them. Half the time, they don't know what they're talking about. And you actually have a passion for your product and for your company. And the community. So that's, that's one of the best things for me personally. And that's, that's why anytime anyone asks me about this, you know, whether it be training videos, body armor, I always say infidel body armor. Well, I appreciate that. I really Gosh, do. that's a great commercial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that'll be uh, 59 95. Great endorsement. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah my- it's absolutely true. There was that concern that people were going to, you know, come knocking at your door if you bought body armor, but, as of right now, there is no reporting in, a requirement like when you buy a gun new. Yeah. There's no reporting uh, requirement. Um, it's just between you and me. And even when I ship it, it's all in a brown box. The return label doesn't say infidel body armor. You know, it's all, um, you know, we want to respect your privacy. We don't want the postman. We don't want your neighbor knowing what you're buying. And so it's as dis- nondescript as possible. And, and we respect that. Definitely. Well, Chad, I tell you what, thank you so much for tonight, all the information. And I tell you what, we would love to have you back on the show. Um, and maybe with one of the guys who is going to be doing the, uh, some of the training ally group, if you have a couple of those guys and they want to get out here and maybe endorse it um, on the show, that would be awesome as well. We'd love to talk to them. Yeah, that'd yep. be fine. I'll, I'm going to, I got two guys, uh, Scott, he's the guy that had the Ranger tattoo who's in uh, driven and, of course, Garrick, and there's a couple other guys I, I know they'd, they'd be interested in it because 
something that really surprised me. I guess it didn't really surprise me, but it, I didn't know the answer to this was that these guys, these these combat vets that are spec op guys, they're mm-hmm. all preppers, all of them. Oh yeah. <laughs> I haven't met one that's not, and, awesome. and that that tells a lot. So yeah, these yeah. guys are they're part of the community too, and and um, I got a lot of respect for those guys. Awesome. Hey, thanks for coming on. Hey, Kyle, you you actually know someone in the industry, but um, and, and someone who actually showed up for the show. I know, dude, man. No, we can't. We but can't. Kyle, he called hey, me earlier and harassed me. Oh, did he? <laughs> oh man, so I was supposed to have this guy on. He's a friend. He wrote a book called One Second After. You know, and, yeah, but he, he's nice, coming on. He's nice a good guy. guy. He's he called guy. me like twice yeah. since yeah. then yeah. to apologize. We just it was a mix up. But hey, Chad, thanks for coming on. And Kyle actually did something. He's kind of earned his pay. Um, yeah, my my free pay for writing everything. And, yeah, and, writing yeah, everything, no. bringing you on. <laughs> and um, you'll be hearing from me because I, I need some body armor. And, um, and yeah, so. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Okay. So, hey, You're moving further to the right on that. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and, we love, and, we, and when you get your training um, um, site up and everything ready, let us know. We'll have you back on because. We got some people here in the Carolinas who would love to take that training, I'm sure. Absolutely. So, hey, thanks a lot, Chad. Thank you. All right. Good night. Good night. night. Dude, you came through for us, man. That was amazing. I came through I came through wonderfully. You did. I mean, what the heck? I mean, it surprised everyone. I mean, G-Man. Well, G-Man's back at the studios having a heart attack going, oh, my gosh. Oh, you're full of it. <laughs> Oh, someone in the chat room says, good job, Kyle. Great. No one's ever said that about me when I brought, well, he didn't come in. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Hey, I'm excited. Um, I was asked to speak at the um, Heritage Life Skills up in Waynesville, um, and a lot of my old friends are going to be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, William Fortune's going to be speaking. Um, Frank Horton, which was on the show. Yep. Um, I'm sure I'll see Chin, the the man we're trying to get killed out of like the four group. books. Isn't that that groupie? Yeah, Chin's the groupie. Yeah, we're the, trying to get he's in like written like four books, and we're trying to get there, the authors there, yeah. trying to get the authors to kill him out. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's gonna be it's like a reunion. Um, I guess the same people in the southeast every year. We do the um, well, this first year I've done the Heritage Life Skill, but we always do the um, uh, the prepper camp, which we're getting ready for the prepper camp in September as well. But um, Heritage Life Skills. Hey, just look that up. Heritage Life Skills 217, and you'll get all the information on there. They have a lot of classes. I know Culper is going to be on there. Samuel, is he's going to be there. Okay. So, yep. so a lot of these people um, that we've had um, um, on the radio show are going to be there. So I can't wait to go. You're going to go yeah, with me, right? I'm going to go for that, and I'll probably be at Prepper Camp as well. I'll be there for your, your emotional support. Emotional? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I needed it last year. Whoa. But, um, hey, again, we are the PreppingAcademy.com. This show is called the PreppingAcademy.com. We come live every Friday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You have to go to Prepper Broadcasting to listen to us live, though. PrepperBroadcasting.com, and we're live. Kyle and I, every Friday night, we take a nap in the afternoon, and we, we spend at least 15 to 20 minutes getting ready for the show. I mean, and Kyle right. always comes with his ener- energy drink, which tonight it is Rockstar Punch. Dude, dude, don't give that. That's like the next sponsor. Oh, uh, that no, no free endorsement. I'm not yet. supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> Rockstar Punch. I, I, Kyle needs uh, your supply. <laughs> and um, hey, if you if you and if you listen to us a podcast, guess what? You know how to find us. So um, yeah. it's on iTunes, Stitcher, all the different places. Yeah, and we'll definitely. Definitely want to get Chad back on for that. I do. I want the body art, but I want it at a at a slight discount. Here's the thing for me. I don't care about your discount. Okay. I, care, I, care. I know you don't. <laughs> You've already got yours. I care. I care about people right now in the prepping community realizing that the left is doing the exact same thing now that we've been doing for the past eight nine years, getting yes. prepared for something, and we are being driven towards a social agenda. Now is the time to put your stuff. And yes. to use, get the training now. Quit procrastinating. Yes, we have. Um, I'll just say it. We um, Donald Trump was elected, and that buys us some time. Great and weeks, and body armor is huge. It, it can it, it saves lives almost every single day. Yeah. 
And if you have a gun, you have a gun because you expect to be in a battle. He said that, and that's true. Yes. So, um, but Kyle, you're already putting your coat on. Jim Cole. Are you cold? Hey, guys. But, again, join us every Friday night, preppingacademy.com. Um, we're on. Hey, thanks, G-Man. Everyone say thanks, G-Man, in the chat room. G-Man runs this from an undisclosed location every single night. Yeah, so hey guys, thanks. Have a good week. Today's broadcast has come to you through the courtesy of the Prepper Broadcasting Network. See our hosts, show schedules, archive programs, and more at PrepperBroadcasting.com. Thanks for listening. Why pay hundreds more in taxes and fees on your wireless bill? Introducing T-Mobile One, now with taxes and fees included. Get four lines for 40 bucks each per month with AutoPay. Switch your family of four to T-Mobile and get a $600 prepaid card. It's kind of like a refund on the taxes and fees you paid to those other guys last year. Don't wait. Visit a T-Mobile store. Top 3% of data users greater than 28 gigabytes per month may notice reduced speeds, sales tax, and regulatory fees included via prepaid MasterCard card. See store for details. Why pay hundreds more in taxes and fees on your wireless bill? Introducing T-Mobile One, now with taxes and fees included. Get four lines for 40 bucks each per month with AutoPay. Switch your family of four to T-Mobile and get a $600 prepaid card. It's kind of like a refund on the taxes and fees you paid to those other guys last year. Don't wait. Visit a T-Mobile store. Top 3% of data users greater than 28 gigabytes per month may notice reduced speeds, sales tax, and regulatory fees included via prepaid MasterCard card. See store for details. Has your data been hacked? Do you feel uneasy about the vulnerability of your personal information online? Were you involved in the Target, LinkedIn, or Microsoft data leaks? Don't know? If not, then pay attention. Join Forrest Garvin from PrepperNet for a free webinar on privacy and security. Gain insights into safe internet browsing, VPNs, crafting online aliases, secure emails, detecting if your data has been hacked, and managing passwords. Secure your spot today for this webinar on privacy and security. It's free. This webinar delves into comprehensive strategies for bolstering your online privacy. We've got you covered from fortifying your passwords to shielding your financial information and mastering state-of-the-art encryption techniques. We're offering two convenient dates to suit your schedule. Reserve your spot now at PrepperNet.com privacy. Don't let cyber threats erode your peace of mind any longer. Take the first step toward a safer, more secure online experience by joining us for our free webinar. Remember, knowledge is power when it comes to safeguarding your privacy. Sign up now at PrepperNet.com privacy. We'll see you there.